for anybody wondering why I wasn't uploading, this is most likely why. What if you sound worse tomorrow? <laughs> Don't go there. Guess what? It's worse today. Well, I'm pleased to let you know. I'm pleased to let you know that my voice is the best it has been in the past couple of days. It just shows you what football can do to you because okay. this celebrations for the Scotland goals, well, that's the reason why my voice even went. So, you kind of see I'm not at least a bit passionate about my country or my club. It's still not quite fully there yet, but uh, I need to get this video out of the day. So, without further ado, let's go into it. So, I think it was last week at some point I put up a video just talking about my general life, a wee update kind of video. And I explained that I was going to get you lot to pick a starting 11 of players within Scottish football that you wanted me to see kind of follow the season as it goes on. So, I've got you to pick the starting 11 in the comments below of that video. And it filled out quite quickly, if I'm being quite honest. And we do have quite a lengthy reserve list as well. So, it's been a rip rolling success. So, as you can see, the starting 11 started off with the goalkeeper, Vaclav Hladke of St Myrn. My voice is like just pathetic and it doesn't even sound like me. Hladke is the goalkeeper, the starting goalkeeper for this team and I think it's quite a strong goalkeeper to have in that position. He's probably one of the better bottom six goalkeepers so quite happy to have him in there and I'm assuming he'll be staying at St Myrn as well so we can follow him throughout the season. As I said, the fact that he's staying at St Mun is a big thing, obviously, because the reserve list basically means that I think they've got about three reserve goalies on the reserve list, for example. So if Ladke got a career ending injury or left St Mun mid season or this summer or whatever, then we could replace him with players on the reserve list. In right back and left back, we've got probably Scotland's two top full backs, which is a massive benefit to the team I think because it means that we're following not only players that you want to see but also players that are the best players in Scottish football so we've got James Tavernier and Kieran Tierney at full backs both highly capable at Scottish league level and of course both of them have been linked with moves away from both Rangers and Celtic respectively so again it's a situation that if they end up moving on this summer or whatever, or get an injury, then we can replace them with reserve players. But I'm really happy that we've got those two players in there because they're just, they're pure quality. In centre back, we've got a bit of difference. We've got Craig Halkett, who of course has just sealed his move to Hearts from Livingston. So we're following a Hearts player and also seeing how Livingston can cope without Craig Halkett as well because there's no doubt that he was one of the main players for them. And it will be interesting to see how he affects Hearts in most likely a positive way and how it affects Livingston in I would expect most likely a negative way. So it will be interesting to follow that dynamic of it as well. And then alongside him we've got Tom Gravosti who has just been promoted with Ross County. This was requested by a Ross County fan so I think they'll be interested to see how he pans out over the course of the season. And if I'm being honest I'd like to see how he competes at like... Premiership level, so be interesting, young guy, and obviously looking to make his mark in Premiership football. Then we move into the two midfield positions, and of course I've got my wee, like tactics board here. So you've got the full backs overlapping, you've got the number six kind of just in the deep line role, sorting out everything, and the number eight attacking. And definitely we've got that dynamic with the two central midfielders here. Number six, Joe Chalmers. Defensive sort of midfielder will hopefully mop up any of the scraps that's left in midfield and he's also got a decent enough wee free kick on him, albeit we do have a decent set piece taker in James Tavernier already. But Joe Chalmers, a good wee kind of player for that deep line role. And as I said, the number eight will be heading more towards goal and creating chances and there's no doubt that this guy has done that massively in at least the last six months of the season and arguably should have got more awards at the end of the season than he did. David Turnbull, again, he's been linked with move away. 
but one is the Celtic so he would still be within contention of this starting 11 if he moved to Celtic but if he moved to one of the English clubs that is putting bids for him then we'd have to rethink this one but I hope he stays at Motherwell because I think he'll flourish far more at Motherwell than he would going somewhere else at this point in his career so hopefully he can stay because I think he's the ideal player to have in this number 8 role who will move a bit here and get into the box can, if there's crosses coming in then he'll come in on the end of them and also obviously putting passes through to any of the other attacking players and then we go to the wingers we've got two ex Dunfermline boys here and obviously they're now as I said not both playing for Dunfermline even though part of me wishes that they still were Paul McMillan on the right wing as you can see I've got him in the role of getting right down the wing and crossing the balls in for as I said, David Turnbull will be coming in, number 9 and 10, which I'll talk about later, the strikers, putting balls in for them, and also improving his own end product, because watching him in the championship, I think that's been his main thing, he's kind of missed for his game, there's no doubt that he's massively improved under Robbie Nielsen in the last six months when Robbie's been there at Dundee United, but hopefully throughout the 2019-20 season, except against Dunfermline, he can improve his end product and we can follow him throughout the season and see if he does well. And on the other wing, as you can see in the tactics board, there's another winger who will get crosses in, Joe Cardo. But I've added in my own wee thing here. As you can see, Joe Cardo on the left wing, number 11, getting down the wing, putting crosses in. But I've put an extra arrow for our Joe because he does like a good cut inside. So don't be surprised if you see more of this sort of stuff for him than the whole getting down the wing and putting crosses in because that's what Joe Cardo's built his career off of so I wouldn't be surprised if that's more of what you're seeing for him than that coming inside and roaming about the place and not really having a direct position just being like a kind of free roaming role in the team no doubt Joe Cardo is a quality player at championship level on his day but he struggled with injuries in the past couple of seasons so let's see how he does in the 2019-20 season again except against Dunfermline, especially this time Joe. And as I said, the two strikers up next. Number 9, Lee Griffiths. Of course, he's been kind of away from football in the past, I don't know, six months or something like that, due to personal reasons, and it looks like he's going to be coming back for the 2019-20 season. So the reason why this player was picked by Tommel was because we want to see how he is after he comes back, see how he adapts to the game again because obviously it's been a while since he's played and no doubt he'll play under Neil Lennon because Neil Lennon would love to have Lee Griffiths at his disposal so Lee Griffiths coming back will be interesting to see how he does especially with that time off and then his strike partner Mitch Meganson currently playing for Cove Rangers who have obviously just came into the SPFL playing in League 2 next season he scored 50 goals almost I think he scored 49 Scored almost 50 goals for Cove Rangers last season. So it'll be very interesting to see how he compares from Highland League level to obviously the SPFL level, League 2. It'll be just interesting to see how both Cove Rangers adapt to this level and also Mitch Meganson because, as I said, the goals came at the level below this. So let's see how he can perform at League 2 level. And that is the fully confirmed starting 11 for the 2019-20 season. I'm not going to take any more suggestions for it because we've got plenty of numbers in there. So if you leave any comments down below, the player won't get included. Sorry. Well, it'll be interesting to see how the team pans out. I think this dynamic of how the team will kind of perform throughout the season will stay. I think that all the positions that I've got, you know, the two fullbacks overlapping, the two centre-halves having a good understanding between each other, two wingers, one cutting inside and both of them actually having the ability to come down the wing and cross in number eight David Turnbull coming in attacking late for the box and the two strikers looking for goals deadly but aye, that's it for this video guys cheers for watching if you did enjoy it please give it a like and for the sake of my voice please give it a like because I am kind of struggling here a bit comment down below your thoughts on the starting 11 who will be the best performer out of this starting 11 within the season and subscribe for more of this type of content. And until the next video, which will be a video coming up on Thursday, I'll see you then. Cheers, guys.